Hello and welcome to week 10 of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. We have a fantastic set of images and cases here for you. So let's get right to it. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you like this stuff, subscribe. Let this information go viral. Tell your colleagues, friends, classmates about this free knowledge so that you can ace the USMLE examination. So let's go ahead and start with this high yield question. So we have a 27 year old male that presents with chronic low back pain worse in the morning. His x-ray is shown below. What heart murmur does he have on physical exam? Is it aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, or mitral regurgitation? And I promise we'll come back to this question at the very end of the short tutorial. So what we're gonna talk about today are the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. And these are uh, you know, a set of diseases or entities that are usually the patient has ANA negative, rheumatoid factor negative diseases. They have a high association with the HLA, B27 allele, all four of these entities, ankylosing spondylitis, IBD arthropathy, psoriasis, and chronic reactive arthritis. All of these tend to have a positive association with HLA, B27 allele. Um, and they typically have, you know, spondyloarthritis, usually back pain in the spine. They can also have peripheral arthritis and they have extra skeletal manifestations as well. And it's, I'm going to group ankylosing spondylitis and IBD or inflammatory bowel disease arthropathy together, as well as psoriasis and reactive or chronic reactive arthritis together because radiographically and from an imaging standpoint, the, these two are identical. So ank spawn and IBD are literally identical. You can't tell them apart. Now, clinically, they're completely different things, right? So for ank spawn, typically um, it's a young male presenting with back pain. That's actually a very telling sign. If a 20 or 30 year old presents with low back pain, you should immediately think about ankylosing spondylitis. That should be something on your differential. That's a very telling. It's one of the only uh, collagen vascular diseases that's more prevalent in males versus females. And inflammatory bowel disease typically presents with, you know, abdominal pain, weight loss, diarrhea, and they may have skeletal manifestations. So, you know, they're very different from a clinical standpoint, but radiographically, you can't tell them apart. And, you know, one classic manifestation here, seen in the pelvis is bilateral sacroiliitis. So along the sacroiliac joints, you see, notice that there's some sclerosis along both sides of the joint here. It's, fair, it's a fairly symmetric process. There's all these lucencies here, which reflect, reflects erosions. All of this is erosions or loss of bone along the sacroiliac joints. So these sacroiliac joints are inflamed. It's a bilateral symmetric process. That's uh, a very telling uh, finding in ank spawn and IBD. Now this patient actually had Crohn's disease. If you take a look very carefully, you can see surgical sutures here in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen and this patient that had their terminal ilium resected. But, you know, if we didn't have those sutures, this could be compatible with either ankylosing spondylitis or inflammatory bowel disease, this case of bilateral symmetric sacroiliitis. Another key finding in these diseases is what's known as a bamboo spine or fusion of the interspinous ligament between the spinous processes, this dense line that shouldn't really be here. It's, you should be able to see the spinous processes separately on the frontal view of a spine. But this dense line here, which is known as a bamboo spine, is a very characteristic finding in ankylosing spondylitis or IBD, inflammatory bowel disease related arthropathy. And IBD, of course, comprises both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Another very characteristic finding in ankylosing spondylitis and IBD is this concept of syndesmophytes or you know, fusion of the corners of the vertebral bodies. This represents ossification of the annulus fibrosis of the disc. This is not seen in psoriasis or chronic reactive arthritis. So this can be a very powerful tool if you see syndesmophytes or uh, fusion, osseous fusion along the corner, from the corner to the corner of the vertebral bodies. Uh, this is seen in ankylosing spondylitis and IBD uh, arthropathy. This is another example of what syndesmophytes look like, just, you know, osseous fusion between the corner of the vertebral body to a corner of the vertebral body. We also have some fusion of the facet joints. This is known as ankylosis of the facet joints, right? But these, these syndesmophytes are very telling um, for both ank spawn and IBD arthropathy which is not, again, seen in psoriasis and, and chronic reactive arthritis. Now, in psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis, we have something called paravertebral ossification, or this dense ossification that starts from the middle of the vertebral body to the middle of the vertebral body, right? And it can be, it kind of looks like a thick comma-shaped ossification. This is ossification of the paravertebral soft tissues, again, from the mid-vertebral body to the mid-vertebral body here, okay? This is seen in psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis in contrast to the syndesmophytes that we see in IBD arthropathy and ank spawn. Now, clinically, again, these two are very different, right? In psoriasis, you typically have, you know, pitting of the nails. Uh, you can have, you know, 
plaques, skin plaques, you know, um, you know, fewer than a third of patients with psoriasis actually have musculoskeletal manifestations, but you know, if they did have them, they would have, you know, paravertebral ossification. Chronic reactive arthritis looks radiographically identical to psoriasis, but it's going to present with, you know, conjunctivitis, urethritis, arthritis, the classic mnemonic can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree, right? It's typically caused by an infection by Shigella, Salmonella, Chlamydia, you know, often triggered by an infection, okay? So, but radiographically, you know, it's going to look exactly like psoriasis. Another key finding in psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis are, is the presence of arthritis and erosions, you know, distally, kind of in the hands and the feet. Notice you can have, you know, these marked erosions along the PIP joints, um, almost looks like a pencil and cup deformity where one bone is telescoping into the other. This is the pencil. This proximal phalanx of the third digit is the pencil. And then the middle phalanx of the third digit is the cup that's receiving this bone here. You have extensive erosions and loss of bone here. Notice that it's within the hand. So usually angspon and IBD arthropathy, if there's peripheral arthritis, it's going to involve the hip or the shoulder. It's not really going to involve the hands or the feet. Whereas in psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis, you typically get peripheral arthritis more distally, kind of in the hands and the feet. Okay, so you have these characteristic findings of erosions, uh, distally distributed, not only are they in the hands, but they tend to be distally distributed in the hands, usually in the PIP joints and the DIP joints, a classic finding of psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis. So the must know USM Lee points, um, first of all, angstmann, always look, if you have back pain in a young male in their 20s or 30s, you always want to think about angstmann, okay? They can also develop restrictive lung disease, you know, which results in low lung volumes, right? And this happens because of the ankylosis that occurs from the costal vertebral and costal sternal joints in, in, in along the rib cage in the chest. Typically, you're gonna have bilateral symmetric sacroiliitis, just like IBD, right? Just like IBD. In psoriasis and chronic reactive arthritis, it's gonna be bilateral asymmetric sacroiliitis. Okay, so that's a key point. You're also gonna have syndesmophytes in the spine. Um, and you know, the peripheral arthritis is gonna be you know, usually in the shoulder or the hip, not in the hands or the feet. Um, and again, chronic low back pain in a young male, think about angstmann. IBD, you're gonna have abdominal symptoms like abdominal pain, weight loss, diarrhea, back pain. The imaging is gonna be identical to angstmann. Imaging is gonna be identical to angstmann, but you're gonna look for signs of bowel surgery like we did in our you know, case of sacral arthritis with the surgical sutures from the terminal ilium, and you're looking for abdominal symptoms. In psoriasis, you're gonna look for skin lesions, nail pitting, they may have back pain, they may also have hand pain and swelling, those are clues to psoriatic arthritis. The, there will be sacroiliitis and it'll be bilateral, but it'll be asymmetric. It won't involve the entire joint, it'll involve patchy areas of the joint on one side and probably patchy areas of a joint on the other side, okay? And instead of getting syndesophytes, you're gonna get paravertebral ossification in the spine. And also the peripheral arthritis is gonna be very distal. It's gonna involve the hands and the feet as opposed to the shoulder and the hip as in angst spine and IBD. Now, the MSK musculoskeletal manifestations are only seen in less than a third of patients with psoriasis. So the skin lesions and the nail pitting are gonna dominate in most patients with psoriasis. And chronic reactive arthritis, you always wanna mention, remember the pearl can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree, right? The imaging findings are gonna be literally identical to psoriasis. So let's come back to the question here. So this was a 27 year old male presenting with chronic low back pain worse in the morning. His X-ray is shown below. What heart murmur does he have on physical exam? Well, first of all, this is a young person it's a male and they're presenting with low back pain. Remember I said, in a young male that presents with back pain, you should automatically think of ankylosing spondylitis. Well, his x-ray is shown and we have the bamboo spine or fusion of the interspinous ligament. So this is a nice example of what either angstmann or IBD potential arthropathy would look like. And you know, a very high association that they love to assess on the USMLE is the association of ankylosing spondylitis and aortic regurgitation, right? So. Aortic regurgitation is going to be the murmur that you would likely see on physical exam in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis. I hope this was helpful. Please pass this along to all your friends, peers, colleagues. Let this stuff go viral. And I'll see you next week for another great tutorial. Thank you so much.